Why can we not have nice things? We get a bad boy striker in Romelu Lukaku and now it looks like he has a thigh injury. Yes, stupid international break. Oh, and we're linked with Leroy Sané for a swap for players that you lot are not gonna like. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Kaf, guys. You welcome, Bratuhi. I have missed you. I know you missed me too. Your favorite YouTube dietitian is here, all right? I am here to feed you all the relevant news that you lot need regarding this great club, regarding Chelsea Football Club. And here we go. We have got four stories for you that all of you are going to enjoy. Number one, Leroy Sané could be on his way to Chelsea. It's reported that Chelsea are considering offering a swap deal for three players, any one of them buying it to pick. And I'm telling you now, you lot are not going to like it. I am telling you, the Zayesh fans, you are not going to like this. Number two, Romelu Lukaku gets another goal after he plays 100 games for Belgium. And Ronaldo, like I said, he's coming after you, 67 goals. But there are some ramifications and a potential injury. And this is bad news. I'm not happy with this. Finally, there's two more stories. Timo Werner. Timo Werner gets a goal in both games and assists in both games. And we need to talk about the disrespect going on to this guy's name and how people are treating him like he's some kind of bum. And finally, the truth about Tino Livermento. A lot of people are saying Chelsea dropped the ball, but apparently the only thing that was dropped is Tino wanted to leave. He did not want a Chelsea career. I'm gonna give you all the news, let's get on with it. But all I ask during this boring international period, that you guys just be kind, you lot be caring, and you lot just help a brother out. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're moving, we're moving towards 15K by the end of the year, and I hope you lot are here for the journey. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's keep it stepping. You would think the transfer window's over, the rumors would stop, but there is a big boy rumor coming out, one that got me on the edge of my seat and one that I would be 100% down for. If, as many of you know, Leroy Sané's move to Bayern Munich has not gone as panned. Like, a lot of people were saying that Leroy Sané will go to Germany, absolutely ball out, but it looks like his work ethic, his opportunity taken at Bayern Munich is not up there with the rest of them. It looks like he's absolutely slacking. Like, the money they broke out and paid for him was a big fee for Bayern Munich. They're known not to spend big money. So the interesting part now is, Bayern want one of our players. We already know they were interested after Callum hudson Adoy. We know Christian Pulisic holds great market value. And we know Hakim Ziyech has got great fan base. He is loved, renowned, and it's a good option. But would Chelsea do it? Well, apparently, according to the Express, Chelsea are keen to vouch their interest in Leroy Sané and they will be happily offering any one of the players and cash for Leroy Sané. For me, this is very interesting, and this, in my opinion, has legs. You need to look at the deal in a perspective. Does it suit both teams? Well, number one, it suits Chelsea. Chelsea have got three assets that are, in Chelsea's eyes, aren't first-teamers. They don't view them as the regular starters. Yes, they don't, because Kai Havertz and Mason Mount are first choice. If they can get one of them out and bring in Leroy Sané, who Thomas Tuchel really likes, then what is there to lose? Callum hudson Odoi isn't getting minutes. Christian Pulisic can't stay fit. And Hakim Ziyech, I think he's a very good player, but apparently he's isn't good enough to start. So what are we going to do with this? Bayern Munich want to get rid of Leroy Sané. He's not been performing. I don't, I'm not saying this deal is going to happen, but I am saying that this deal has an element of truth to it. And it's one that we need to respect and one that I could see happening. Maybe in January, maybe in the summer. Let's look into it. Let's wait and see if there's more credence coming out with this report. On to fantastic news, and this is great news for me. The best news I've heard, Romelu Lukaku gets 100 international caps. I still remember when Romelu Lukaku was coming through at Anderlecht and I was playing FIFA and I was signing him. Honestly, this guy was massive. Even on FIFA, they made him so like, powerful and so big. Like He was absolutely amazing. Yes, his finishing wasn't on fleek, but otherwise, all round, the guy was an absolute monster. So... For me, it's such an eye opening, and it shows how much I've aged with the like with Lukaku watching him play. Like realistically speaking, he's what 28, I'm 25, so we've been growing through this together. Like I've been seeing his progression. There isn't a minute that I haven't seen of his career. Like I loved it. But him getting 100 goals and 67 league like international goals is amazing. On track to break Ronaldo's record, in my opinion, the way he's going up against like little teams and slapping them left, right, and center beautiful assist and a great goal like in the game that we just went past against Czech Republic well played by him Eden Hazard got on the square sheet but 
He got suspended for the midweek encounter. The only problem is he's got a fire strain. Yes, and this fire strain is very annoying. It's actually really frustrating because I don't know how serious it is. It isn't really reported, but he's going to have a scan. I hope it's not that bad because we need him fit for Chelsea. We need a number nine. We want to have a title mount and without him, I don't think we have one. I really don't. I think we need his goals. We need his presence. We need his like aesthetic need in that team. We need a vocal point that we can play towards. And you see with Belgium how well he links up the play. And I hope this can translate into Chelsea's game, considering that Chelsea are actively trying to improve and make him the spearhead of our attack. Hopefully this is not too serious, but let's see where it, ha where it goes. The final story or penultimate story, one, one after this, is the one regarding Timo Werner. Timo Werner scored two goals in this international break, got two assists and is balling out for Germany. The man openly came out and said that he hasn't been trusted for Germany and was left on the bench. It was nice that Flick actually trusts him. That was direct shots at their old manager, not at Thomas Tuchel before some of you start going, oh, he was cussing Thomas Tuchel. He really wasn't. But more importantly, he looked like he got his mojo back. And I think he's a confidence player. But the one thing I don't want people to do now is jump on the bandwagon of, oh my God, Timo's back and celebrate when he scores goals in training. Like, I think this is really damning when people make rants and raves and jumps and cartwheels and backflips and like um, splits when they see him score goals in training. He's meant to score goals in training. Like he's a baller. He's a good footballer. He He's not a bum. Like he's actually a good player. His runs are insightful. He's direct and he will get goals given game time. Like, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. So let's be patient with him. Let's see what happens this year. This year, there's no responsibility on him to lead the line and be the main goal scorer. This year, his 12 to 15 goals will be perfect. I don't want him getting 25. I don't want him getting 20. I want him in that 15 range. If he gets 20, bonus. But if he gets me 15, I'll be over the moon. Literally, he is gonna get limited game time this year because I think Mason Mount is going to be actively playing ahead of him. I think Kai Havertz and Romelu Lukaku are the first names on the team sheet. I wanna see what happens and how this develops, right? So stay tuned for it, it's exciting. But now on to Timo. Livermento. This is the one I wanted to talk about and it's very interesting. A lot of people gave Marina Garaskaiva a lot of stick for the way that Tino Livermento left the club. A lot of people got at her and they said, you know what, this is unacceptable, how dare she, this is absolutely stinky behaviour. For me, they couldn't be far from wrong. They literally couldn't be far from wrong. This is the total behavior you expect from Twitter children. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart, you expect it from Twitter children. Because now reports are coming out. Chelsea have been trying to negotiate a deal with Tino Livermento since March. They literally tried to offer him a pathway. They said, you will be in the squad. You will get a new deal. Player said no. Yes, and when the player says no, what are you going to do? Beg him. You can't beg him even more. You've already given him a new deal. What else are you going to give him? You can't give him guarantee spots. And apparently his reasoning was, Reese is ahead of me. And so is Aspilicueta. And this is what happens when you have a youngster in Reese James playing ahead of him. Tino didn't see himself displaced in Reese James at this early stage. And this is the issue that Chelsea are going to have when good young players come through. Other players who've been growing up with these players see them and go, you know what? I'm not better than Reese James. At this moment in time, I need to go and play to become better than Reese James. Aspilicueta is a long-term servant who is a great leadership character in the dressing room and will be happy with a bit part role. What does this mean? It means Aspi ain't going nowhere. So Tino has to leave. We have a buyback clause and potentially one day we will activate this buyback clause. And what does that mean in the long run for us? Well, it means something simple. When he comes back and he costs 40 million pounds, he will be playing. So that's the one positive. If he's good enough, he'll be back. So be supportive of the board. Be reluctant to just jump on their neck. The board is a great team like for Chelsea. We make good money, we buy good players and more importantly, they plan for the future. Look at Arsenal, look at United, look at Liverpool. Boards are crap and we haven't got one of those. So people, this is the video. I hope you lot enjoyed it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts, right? Peace out, I'm out, bye.